not like we're working with a lot of space. We're just parked on the street right in front of the house. And we're about to change the axles on our 27 foot overlander and see how quick and easy this goes. Simply using ramps. So just using the ramp, I raised it up enough to get this wheel completely off the ground on both sides. Now taking the axle out itself is really kind of simple. There's just two bolts on each side. Right there's one and there's the other. See that's the front of the trailer and the axle is actually bolted to this frame rail. 15, 16 socket on the outside, 15, 16 box wrench to hold the head of the bolt. So taking the shock off is super easy. One nut, whoops, gotta go find that. And then pry it off the stud. And that's all you got to do. Now the axle, I pull those two bolts out. They're loose. I just got to get under there and support it, pop the bolts out, and drop it down to the ground. And then get the new axle in there. Okay, so we literally took the old axle and pulled the bolts. It's real easy and just muscled it down. It weighs about probably 150 pounds, so each side is about 75 pounds. And I drop it to the ground, drop the other side of the ground, and we literally just dragged it out. We got the other one, the new one out of the trailer and set it here, and we're going to drag it underneath. There's the old one right there, dragged out. Okay, so as you can see, the axle is about two and a half inch square tubing and even these holes here in the bracket from one end to the other about ten and a quarter and over here the new axle this square tube here is what is it uh, a little over three inch anyway it won't fit in the channel of the chassis of the frame of the trailer and the width of the holes is okay, different as too. as I showed you in the other video, this notch here isn't big enough for the larger axle. So yes, you actually have to use something to cut it out. I didn't want to use a cutting torch. Uh, jigsaw got it. Of course, now I got to use the mini grinder here to try to get a little radius going in the... I'm gonna grind a little radius in there to relieve any stress for cracks. This one wasn't so easy and it's gonna be hard to get that radius in there. But anyway, just had to open the hole back a little bit and cut the notch back from the front moving back. Just cut the notch another quarter inch wider, move a hole about an inch wider. I didn't have a mini grinder with an air compressor. So this is what I used, a skill saw. The, the first axle went in just fine that way. So. Doing the second axle, total time about four and a half hours, mostly working by myself, and that's how it's done. Boom. So Carol thinks this is funny that I'm using a jack to lift this up because it's heavy, but how clever I am and how I do it. You can turn Okay, that off. I kind of uh, skipped some of it because I didn't want to stop just to take a video. Anyway, I used the jack to drag out the old one and drag in the new one and put it in position and get it up in there. And it's in. So putting the shock on was real simple. Uh, you can see where I cut out the channel and the axle fits right in there and the bolt bolts lined up okay because I had to cut that one a little bigger. It's not pretty, but it's done. And now you just put on the backing plate. Make sure you put the right on the right and the left on the left and put on the bearings and wheels and drums and all that and you're done. I'll come back in a minute to show you the finish. Okay, product. so I hand packed one of these bearings and put it down in there. Then put one of these seals in there and with the wood end of a handle of a hammer I tapped it on down until it's flush and that should be good. Lots of uh, grease down in there hand packed in each of the bearings and I hand packed the smaller cone bearing and I'm going to fill this with more grease and put it on so 
I'm ready to put the drum with the inner bearing and seal up on the spindle with the backing plate with all the brake assembly in place. I already connected the, the wires and that should be it. Then I'll put the outer bearing on the uh, lock nut and a cutter key and a cap and put the wheel on and roll. Okay, I put the nut on and I snugged it, backed it off a little bit, put the cutter pin in, bent it over one way, cut it off and bent it in the on the other side, packed it as full as grease as I could and fill the cap with a little more grease and put it on there, bang it in place. Uh, as far as I know, there's no pretty way to bang these on. Uh, you usually wind up looking like that as you bang them on. But that's just me. And there's, just make sure everything spins all right. It does, there's no wiggle, wiggle to it. So I think we're good. And make sure you don't get any grease on the shoe pads or any other place. The grease only goes in that sealed area. So I think that's it. I'm almost ready to put the wheel on. Just hammer that cap on and I'm ready to go.